Many of you know, Civitas conducts a monthly poll on different issues. For this issue, uh, for this month, we did a special school choice poll. And we're going to do, instead of running through every question like uh, we normally do at the monthly polls, this month uh, we did run a normal poll, but as far as this presentation, I'm going to concentrate only on about eight questions. And why I wanted to do that is because I wanted to burn in a little bit into the cross tabs. In other words, the data behind you know the major points so we could get a little bit of an idea and kind of delve behind public opinion uh, so we're going to do that a little differently and uh, some of the questions that we're going to talk about today as I said we're going to focus primarily on eight questions one of the questions was we as we frequently do was we asked the public to grade the public schools we also asked a question is to really, why do your children go to the public schools? What are the reasons? In other words, are they the best educational option? Are you committed to public schools? Uh, are there, is it because there's no other educational options available? We asked that question. We also asked about whether or not you felt parents had a right to, to decide where their children went to school. We also asked the question, as we frequently have in the past, if you could choose and money was not an issue, where would you send your child to school? And, and then finally, we also asked three questions about, um, let me back up a little bit. We also asked the question about how the legislature was doing in expanding educational options. Are they doing a good job? Do they, do, do they need to do more? And then finally, we also asked about existing choice programs, opportunity scholarships, also charter schools, and then what's on the horizon in many states, education savings accounts. Okay? So, uh, a little bit about the methodology here. Now, we talked with approximately, eight, uh, approximately 811 registered voters, ages 25 to 54, we did that because we wanted to get parents. Okay, 750 of those were identified as they, reg as they voted in 2016, 411 parents, margin of error approximately uh, 3.7 percent. The poll was in the field January 17th and 18th. Now, our results, as, as well as the cross tabs, will be available online after this session at that address, www.ncivitas.org forward slash 2017 forward slash school choice poll. Okay, if you wanted to copy that down. The actual results of the poll, the full results, as I said before, we're doing an abbreviated poll here. The full results and the cross tabs are available at that website. Okay, so let's start. Okay, question number one here. Okay, if you had to assign a letter grade to all public schools in North Carolina, what letter grade would you give the public schools? Okay? Have you not been able to find a If we look at the division here, approximately 33% of respondents went with an A or a B, approximately 61% went C, D, or F. Okay, and almost almost half of the uh, respondents were in the C category. Okay, how does that break down with respondents? Okay, Is it coming in a little slow there. Okay, all right. Who gave an A or B? Approximately 34% of Republicans, 36% of Democrats, unaffiliated, about 25%. Parents that break down between, if you're a parent or a non-parent, you can see there's about a 7% difference there. And then if we concentrate more on those uh, respondents that gave a C, D, or F. Look here, this is a fairly strong these are fairly strong numbers and fairly uniform amongst these three groups. Republicans, Democrats, and unaffiliated. Actually, the highest uh, percentage is amongst unaffiliated, but um, these are fairly strong scores. The difference between parent and non-parent, not too much at all. Um, there's not, in, in some of these questions, there's quite a distinction between the responses between parents and non-parents. So you see approximately, in this here, it's about a two to one. Other polls that we've done, you can, whether you want to call them satisfactory, 
or unsatisfactory, uh, it's oftentimes a two to one ratio of people. And in, in this case here, C, D, or F are classified as, as s scores or grades that would be of concern. So let's go to the next question here. All right, if your child is in the public school, what are the primary reasons why your child attends a school? Okay, um, here we have the responses. Approximately 34% said they can't afford other options. 23% said school is doing a satisfactory job. 19% uh, committed to traditional public schools. Best educational option, 14%, and don't have other options, approximately 7%. So what we see here is about 41% look like, well, if they had other options or if they had the money, they wouldn't be there, but approximately uh, the remainder, 20, about 56%, if I'm adding correctly, sound pretty satisfied with uh, the public schools, but we're talking about about 40% here. We've asked this question, we asked this question uh, similarly in the past, Greg, you're here. We've asked this question before. Okay. Okay. We've asked this question before, and uh, oftentimes the numbers are very similar. We've asked it three times in the last three years, and the option of uh, public going to public school is always between about 35 and 40 percent. Uh, that you you. Uh, you would have gone there because you're satisfied with what's going with uh, the, with the educational process. But let's um, let's go to the next question. The breakdown of those options. Okay. Now, again, these the three primary options, the three largest choices on the previous page, are illustrated here. Uh, I think the main column that we probably need to look at is probably the one on the far left. Can't afford other educational options. And who's basically responding to that? 37% of those respondents are Republican, 29% Democrat, and actually 38% of those respondents who said uh, that they can't afford other options are unaffiliated. So that's pretty broad based. There are a lot of different uh, a wide swath of politics, you know, in that in that com in that column there. So, next question: Do you agree or disagree with the following statements? Parents should have the ability to choose where their child attends school. This is another question that we've asked frequently over the last three, four, five years, and it, it has always come up a very strong plus differential. If you look at the numbers. 53% of that strongly agree, 28% agree. There's about 15% if you, 14% if you add up the disagrees. So that's a, uh, approximately about 81% agree with that statement. That's a very strong. Now, oftentimes we will get um, blowback from people on the other side that say, well, if you ask that question, of course, that's a leading question. It's not a leading question. We, we've asked it numerous ways. You can put in various tags about, does a parent have a right to put their child in a school that's appropriate to their educational needs? We've asked it various different ways. The total numbers on there usually always range between a high 70s and 80s, which is a very high poll number. That is a very high number, as anyone who looks at polls know, that is a very strong number. Okay, how is that broken down? If you agree, parents should be able to choose their child's school. <clears throat> broken down by uh, voter registration, Republicans, 87% agree. Democrats, 78%. Unaffiliated, 76%. Okay, a difference, differential between parent and non-parent respondents. 85% of parents agree with that. You'd think that'd be a little higher. But even if you're not a parent, you, you believe that 76% would agree with that statement. Okay, broken down racially, 70% white. Black, 84%. Asians, 
Okay, all high in all those categories. Okay, another question. Do you agree or disagree parents should be able to choose their child's school? This is the same question, just broken down by region. This is the same question. Respondents, again, do you agree that parents should be able to choose their child's school by region? 79% Charlotte, Western 77. You can see all the numbers are either high 70s, low 80s, southeast, southeastern part of the state, the highest number there. So again, kind of eye-popping numbers, but if you ask the question over and over again, an important question, these are really, this is really important polling data, and uh, we need people to understand that parents feel as strongly as they do about this. Okay, a next question is about where your child would go to school if resources weren't a problem, and you could choose them, choose that they could go anywhere. Where would you select? 44% said a traditional public school, 35% said a private school, 11% a charter school, 8% a home school, and approximately 2% a virtual school. As I've said in the past, we've asked this question at least once a year for the last three, four years. The traditional public school number has always varied probably between about 35 and 45% on all of our data. But the important thing here on the options is that if you combine the, the options that are non-traditional public school, we're looking at about 56%. That's an important number. That means that over half of parents, if they had the choice, they would make a choice other than the traditional public schools. Did everyone hear that? If given a choice, parents would choose a school other than the traditional public schools. That's not bashing the public schools. What we want and what we fight for is the right to have parents choose a school that fits their child's educational needs, okay? That's what we're working for. Okay, and in this case here, 44% would choose the traditional public school. 56% of others would choose a non-traditional option. Okay, we broke that down by party registration. Again, those, these are the breakdown of traditional public schools, 43% Republican, 48% Democrat, 37% unaffiliated. For the traditional public school, no surprise there. In private schools, that's the third column. If you look at those, a somewhat surprising statistic there is 42% for unaffiliated, which is the highest data point in the column, which is uh, surprising to many people. Okay, the next question. We asked how parents or the voters felt about how the legislature was doing and expanding educational options. As you know, over the last, what well, about approximately 2010, there's been a lot of uh, work done to expand choice for parents and students in North Carolina. We asked basically, how are they doing? The question, which of these statements best reflects your views on how well the legislature is meeting the educational needs of families? First statement is state lawmakers are doing a good job of expanding educational options for families. Or state lawmakers, need to do more to expand educational options for families. There are the data points that need to do more. 70% of respondents felt that. Only 17% said that they're doing a good job. Parents want more. How is this broken down? And that's, this is, now this is a breakdown of that 70%. 69% Republican, 73% Democrat. 67% unaffiliated. You would think maybe that there might be a differential, a strong differential between parent and non-parent here. There really isn't. I mean, it's 3% here. But um, that, I think, is, is, is important as well. The breakdown uh, by race, 67% say they need to do more amongst the whites. Amongst blacks, 76%. Asians, 81%. Okay. 
break down by region. Again, do we need to do more? If you look at, you briefly see that, again, it's all in the high 60s, low 70s in every region of the state. The northeastern part is grayed out a little bit because of the respondents there. So, but you see that's all very high. Okay, now we're going, we're gonna move through and the next three questions are gonna be on basically public sentiment on existing, on, on school choice programs, opportunity scholarship, as well as the, um, speech, the um, charter school program. Okay, here's the first question. North Carolina Opportunity Scholarship Program provides scholarships to low and middle income students. Last fall, 6,200 students were able to use scholarships for up to $4,200 to attend a private school. Do you favor or oppose the Opportunity Scholarship Program? Strong favor, S approximately 71% said they strongly favor or favor the Opportunity Scholarship Program. The opposition here is about 20%, about 9% not sure. This number has grown. This is another question that we've asked numerous times in the last four or five years. This number has always hovered probably around low 60s to 70s. The important part is that support for the charter school program is growing and that's important. Okay, how does this break down? If you favor the opportunity scholarship, for the opportunity scholarship, I'm sorry. Um, Republican 72%, Democrats 70%, unaffiliated 67%. Parents, there seems to be uh, really not much of a difference between non-parent and parent. We broke down uh, for the opportunity scholarship program by race, 68%, 80% amongst African Americans, 70, 74% amongst the Asians, so a strong, uh, strong support there for that program. Okay, charter schools. Charter schools, here's the question, are public schools which are governed not by a school board, but by an independent board. The law creating charter schools intended for the schools to be more innovative, subject to fewer administrative regulations, and held accountable for academic achievement. Based on your understanding of charter schools, do you favor or oppose charter schools in North Carolina? Okay, strongly favor and favor, 70%. Opposition, about 20% when we combine the columns. Again, a very strong number here. If you break down this, the uh, favor, strongly favor or, or favor, the breakdown by party registration, 74% Republican, 62% Democrat, Unaffiliated, 74%, which is a very high number, again. Parent, non-parent, a uh, little differential there, about 6% and broken down by race. 74% should note uh, African-American support, support and 68% for Caucasians. Okay, the last question here we talked about, we're talking about is on education savings accounts. Who here has heard about an education savings account? Okay, this is probably, this program is probably the, the future of school choice. There are five other states that have ESA programs. 30 states are currently uh, considering legislation. I'm not gonna get into a lot of detail on it, but we, we, uh, we actually had another question on the expanded poll that you can know, but we asked who have heard of the programs, and hardly anyone did. But we did expand the question basically to say what they do, and we asked one question on this, and here it is. Five states now have similar type programs called ESA accounts. That's in reference to the poll question. Supporters say ESAs give parents control over where their child attends school and allows them to customize their child's education. Opponents say ESAs take money away from the public schools, give money to schools that aren't held to the same standards as public schools. So this question asks, do you support the idea of education savings accounts? Okay, the, our response was strongly favor or favor, 52%. People who opposed the combined columns there, about 30%. This is, in my view, kind of a high figure considering not many people know about them. We've actually began polling on ESAs in 2012. And some of these numbers vary a little bit, but we, I've never seen a poll where they're underneath 50. Now, there's also, we didn't ask on this poll, but oftentimes frequent polls will ask, 
if you support the idea, what's the best way, the best mechanism to implement it, and then you can get different responses. But this is just the idea. 52% said they favor ESAs. Okay, a breakdown for that, Republican, 62%. Democrats, 45, unaffiliated, 46. Uh, parent, there's a strong differential here between parents and non-parents, and I think some of that is not having a clue of what an ESA is. You know, which would be, which is nine percentage points there. Broken down by race, 53% of whites, 49% of blacks, and 55% of Asians support. Those are, those are strong numbers. Okay, broken down by region again. If you look across North Carolina, lowest numbers, Western and 46%, but in the triangle, in Piedmont, a little over half. Charlotte also, strong showing in, in southeastern North Carolina. You'll be hearing a lot about ESAs in the future, uh, and I'd be surprised. I mean, there has been a bill that was introduced a couple of years ago. There'll be some consideration, again, for the, the um, best way to implement it. Some states have used special needs as a vehicle, as a, ESAs as a vehicle to specifically address uh, special needs. And some of you uh, may know that Nevada actually has a pretty much a, a all statewide ESA where, where parents can use approximately up to $5,100 and, and children can go to whatever school they want. It's not limited by um, different, it's basically open to everyone. It's been litigated and the state has to, has to change a, um, how the program is financed, but that will be a reality probably shortly. So, but that's all I have.